okay? Are we okay? Okay. Now, this is another old ignition that I have. It's, they used to call it CH ignition. It built by a chap guy in Wyoming by the name of Bill Carpenter. He was the first guy who came with electronic ignition for our hobby. And from what I heard, actually, this guy was the one that invented electronic ignition for GM company. That's a long time ago. We're talking about something around possibly 33 or 35 years ago. And this ignition, of course, works as good as this one. And uh, Bill Carpenter and his electronic ignition came out first. And then this guy from Quebec, Canada, came with the idea of advanced CDI, which Bill Carpenter didn't have that. So I got the two ignition, but I decided to use this one from Quebec, which I don't know where it come from. I would like to hear comments to see if anybody can notice this ignition and tell me where, who, and what name they were making that. So we had the two ignition, but I made the choice to use that one. Okay, so we're gonna start it now and show you the RPM. And go ahead, close shot to the engine. And, oh, uh, for the power, get closer, Richard. For the power, I'm using the 4S, uh, but I'm using a uh, regulator, which I do only 5 amps, because all these old ignitions, they go maximum 4.8, 5 amp, I mean 5 volt maximum. So my back is set for 5 volt, but my battery is 4S, which is, what is it, about 14 volts. But we fit to the ignition only 5 volts. So here, we're gonna plug it in. And as you see, as you can see, I have no electric starter, anything, and it starts by hand very nice and easy once the fuel is fed into the carburetor. So we're gonna go ahead and start it. Choke open. Open it up and Richard, you can, you can stay on there. Okay, we're gonna throttle it up now. As you can see, it goes to about 7,900. 7900 plus and sometimes in the air as you can see it can go all the way down to 150 but remember this idling the way that it acts is because of the ignition the ignition is a 30 years old ignition and it needs time to pick up the sense and uh, tells the spark where to fire so this is what idling we get now 165 and we're gonna go one more time to get the maximum RPM. If you stay on there. Okay, we're gonna 
guns up. As you can see, the idling goes pretty good. It picks up. So we're going to try it out. And uh, as I said, the, the prop is 18.6 uh, wide APC. It's a very the heavy duty prop. And it's amazing that uh, my engine, which is a Sato 180, it's only 29 cc, <clears throat> and uh, I believe we got about 7900, 7900 plus, very close to 800. And of course, in the air, it might go to about 8000 plus with 18.6. Now, uh, I'm not going to try it with a 1610. You just got to trust me. With a 1610 APC competition prop, I'll get about 86 to 8700 RPM. But I don't like a small props, and I'm going to stay with a bigger prop as it is and it's gonna go in my uh, extra 300 that I have a 40 cc actually on it but I'm gonna replace it with this because it gives me same power as my 40 cc and uh, so therefore these are all the setup as you can see you can get close to it and uh, show them all these little tiny things that is gonna be done and uh, sensor and uh, one more thing, I changed the bearing on this T. Uh, the bearings on Sato engines are very hard to get out, especially if the, the engine has been sitting in the garage for 10 years. And actually I purchased this engine around 1999, one of the first Sato 180 that came out to the market uh, on Glow. And I ran it for about, I would say, a good three, four years. We had a lot of running on it. And uh, then it was sitting in the garage from 2000, from 2005 or 2006, I believe, maybe longer, up to a few months ago that I got it out. So it was very dirty. I cleaned it all up and I changed the bearing, definitely. Bearing got to be changed. And then you set up your cam gear again. For those of you that you don't have instruction for Sato 180, the cam gear comes with a benchmark when you want to set it up so you have to put it on the top dead center and the cam gear has a benchmark pointing down which where your cam gear is going to go straight down otherwise you're going to mess up the whole timing everything and of course the valves everything I readjust it and lubricate it and at this time I'm using 25 to 1 oil and it's perfectly okay I have opened it and I exam the piston rod the crankshaft uh, everything it's it seems to me lubrication is is more than enough and it's perfectly a stance but however the new sato that they have on gas also does not have the needle bearing on their piston rod so therefore i think the piston rod that they make in the housing that they got in there is somehow strong enough and polished enough that can handle with no bearing so well uh, that's about it and I hope you liked the video and give me some uh, feedback particularly about this ignition I want to know where this ignition come from I know I bought it but I forgot from where and what they are from Quebec somewhere in Quebec Canada and carburetor of course if you don't like these nipples from Weedwacker you can get regular carburetor from Hobby King uh, under different variety names and uh, Venturi and the opening of course you have to measure it usually if you buy carburetor which is good for 25 cc 30 cc or 35 cc should be okay for all size from 20 and up so you don't have to be too uh, uh, you know fussy about the the size of it although you're not going to go oversized either if you go carburetor way oversized with the Venturi and the opening you're going to have a hard time to start the engine you might get a little bit extra rpm but definitely you're going to have a hard time to start it so you got to stay with the limited of venturi over here i haven't measured it yet but this one came from a 25 cc uh weed whacker, which is pretty good so any 25 cc walbro carburetor could handle a sato 180 at those rpm and uh, idling that we have good enough thank you very much for watching